Okay, the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, dear fellows. Today we are going uh, we are going to talk about uh, Indian nuclear doctrine, and uh, there is much debate on the uh, first use and no first use in modern times. Like for example, um, uh, many analysts, Indian analysts like Vipin Narayan uh, from MIT, uh, has been you know talking about that India may use uh, first its nuclear you know uh, weapons. and um, it's just a matter of time and uh, the, there is a lot of debate on the um, first use or no first use um but let's understand analyze um things in uh, real perspective that uh, first of all we are going to dissect uh, what is the indian nuclear doctrine and what was the rationale behind and uh, thirdly how it is going to impact on pakistan security regional security of course and global security okay the first and more uh, for first and foremost thing is um which you must understand um that you have to understand the uh, you know uh, the strategies of your enemy and uh, according to sunzu um, uh, who was the military strategist uh, you know if you quote these things in your paper that will fetch you good marks theek hai to isliye ye quotation maine yahan pe dali hai ki if you know yourself and know your enemy you can win 100 battles theek hai so this is the idea uh knowing your enemy so uh, by knowing your enemy you are going to analyze the indian nuclear doctrine in detail so you can come up with adequate uh, you know recommendations um, tangible recommendations for pakistan so first of all uh, let's have a quick background a small intro that how india uh, you know acquired nuclear weapons what was the motivation behind and um, why india acquired nuclear weapons actually so indian nuclear doctrine started as civil nuclear doctrine we uh, know this uh, so this is the introduction you are going to give you in your in your question so indian civil nuclear doctrine started in 1944 even before their independence under the auspices of homi baba and uh, tata steels they they funded that particular program so initially their nuclear program was uh, civilian based uh, but later on they converted this program into uh, nuclear weapons um there is a perception that uh, india acquired nuclear weapons because of china uh, so let me correct you that this was not the uh, case in 1952 um nehru asked his uh, you know nuclear scientist chief nuclear scientist can you make nuclear weapons so he replied yes within 3 years we can make nuclear weapons or china ne china acquired nuclear weapons china detonated its first nuclear device in 1964 to india agar dekha jaye to india was ready in 1952 Uh, तीन साल के अंदर वो बना सकता था खैर इंडिया यू नो कैरिड आउट फर्स्ट न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट इन 1974 व्हिच इज रिगार्डेड एज पीएनई जिसको ओप स्माइलिंग बुद्धा भी कहते हैं एंड द आइडिया ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट वाज हेज मनी नॉट ओनली इन साउथ एशिया बट यू नो टू बिकम अ मेजर पावर ग्लोबल पावर जस्ट लाइक यू नो नेहरू थॉट अबाउट इट तो वो जो थिंकिंग थी नेहरूयन वो ही चलती आ रही थी आगे उसकी जो बेटी वगैरह थी वो ही सारे इसको लेके चल रहे थे और सारी इन्हीं चीजों को ये फॉलो कर रहे थे सो बेसिकली इंडिया वांटेड टू बी यू नो अ मेजर पावर ग्लोबल पावर ऑफ कोर्स रीजनल हेजमन तो दे यू नो एक्वायर्ड न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स दे डेटोनेटेड देर फर्स्ट न्यूक्लियर डिवाइस इन नाइनटीन एंड दे न्यूक्लोराइज साउथ एशिया एट दैट टाइम अच्छा तो ऑटोमेटिकली उसके बाद फिर जो भी सिचुएशन हुई पाकिस्तान ने जो कुछ भी किया वो आपको पता ही है सारा विल फोकस ऑन इंडिया फर्स्ट एंड देन वी कैन फोकस ऑन दी पाकिस्तान न्यूक्लियर स्ट्रेटेजी अच्छा तो इंडियन न्यूक्लियर डॉक्ट्राइन द ड्राफ्ट न्यूक्लियर डॉक्ट्राइन वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन 1999 आफ्टर द यू नो ओवर न्यूक्लियराइजेशन इन 98 इंडिया ने पांच धमाके दोबारा किए 98 में एंड दे डिक्लेयर देमसेल्व्स एज अ न्यूक्लियर वेपन स्टेट और पाकिस्तान का जो न्यूक्लियर ब्लफ था आई वुड से उसको उन्होंने चैलेंज किया एंड अल्टीमेटली पाकिस्तान ने भी रिप्लाई कर दिया उसके बाद बट देयर फर्स्ट न्यूक्लियर ड्राफ्ट केम इन टू थाउजेंड इन नाइनटीन एंड इट वाज जस्ट अ ड्राफ्ट डॉक्ट्राइन दे जस्ट नेम्ड इट अ ड्राफ्ट न्यूक्लियर डॉक्ट्राइन और उसके अंदर बहुत सारी यही चीजें थी uh, लेकिन उन्होंने इसको थोड़ा सा uh, इसको इम्प्रूव किया और इन टू द फाइनल डॉक्यूमेंट केम okay so let's now quickly understand this final document what does it say and then you can apply it on the uh, strategic situation in south asia so the first thing which they talk about is the new no first use okay by this heading you will analyze and you will say that okay the indian strategy is no first use they are not going to use 
nuclear weapon as first. But if you read their document, official document, you will get to know that this was actually the first use. Just read it. Nuclear weapon will only be used in retaliation against a threat, number one, a threat of a nuclear, chemical, biological attack on the Indian territory or Indian forces anywhere. Point is that this is based on threat perception, threat perception of India. If they face uh, imminent threat or if they face any threat from Pakistan, uh, for, for instance, so uh, before Pakistan use nuclear weapons, they may use nuclear weapon, which means this is first use. Number one and number two, if India gets you know attacked by chemical or biological weapons other than nuclear, then India will will carry out nuclear a nuclear strike on uh, Pakistan. So basically, uh, this doctrine is based on their own threat perception, which is very dangerous. That perception could be wrong. So basically, it's, it is first use option, and uh, which is you know creating serious troubles in Pakistan, or uh, it would be really really uh, you know uh, threatening for the regional security as well. So pehle cheez jo inki hai no first use. This is confusing. This is ambiguous, and it would be really critical for Pakistani policy makers. So as an aur ke wo ghabra ke wohi pehle use karte. So secondly, uh, nuclear retaliation against biological or chemical weapon uh, attack, which is against international norms, definitely. So this is this is what the Indian nuclear doctrine says. So element of restraint is actually missing uh, from this particular strategy. So this, so this was the first point. No first use, but it is actually the first use. Secondly, yes. India says that uh, they are going to have you know credible minimum deterrent. Uh, what is credible minimum deterrent? Credible minimum deterrent means that you are going to, you know, have, uh, you know, a limited uh, nuclear warheads, but their command and control would be credible, and these weapons would be credible. And for example, how you get credibility uh, of nuclear deterrence? Number one, you acquire second strike capability. Second strike capability uh, provide you an option to carry out strike after absorbing first strike from the enemy. यानी कि फॉर एग्जांपल पाकिस्तान अगर फर्स्ट स्ट्राइक करता है इंडिया के ऊपर सो इंडिया विल अब्सॉर्ब द फर्स्ट स्ट्राइक एंड देन इंडिया वुड रिटेन द ऑप्शन टू कैरी आउट सेकंड स्ट्राइक कैपेबिलिटी नाउ हाउ यू एक्वायर सेकंड स्ट्राइक कैपेबिलिटी थ्रू न्यूक्लियर सबमरीन्स बिकॉज़ ऑन न्यूक्लियर सबमरीन यू कैन प्लेस योर न्यूक्लियर वॉरहेड्स एंड यू कैन पुट पुट देम ऑन सी एंड यू नो देन दे आर सिक्योर एंड दिस गिव यू एन ऑप्शन सेकंड स्ट्राइक ऑप्शन सेकंडली you get second strike capability through deep underground tunnels or mobile you know uh, warheads but the ideal second strike capability comes from nuclear submarine which india has already acquired arihan so uh, this is something which is which makes india's nuclear deterrent as credible you know uh, so this is what india is doing now this this particular strategy is actually uh, ambiguous credible minimum deterrence now what is the minimum of india we don't know um for example if china uh, for example if china has got about uh, you know 434 nuclear warheads so will india follow the chinese uh, you know path are they going to acquire 400 plus nuclear warheads just to make sure that they are equal to china or they are going to uh, you know uh, get a nuclear a 160 plus nuclear warhead to you know deter pakistan what is their minimum so this is also ambiguous um so this is this would be uh, really really critical for pakistani strategic thinkers and um, uh, so this is going to be a uh, very very you know um, a difficult situation for the south asian security so let's move forward and let's understand the third point uh, india says that the nuclear retaliation to a first strike will be massive and designed to inflict unacceptable damage so what is there you know unacceptable damage it is also again ambiguous are they going to attack karachi are they going to take out pakistani capital islamabad or are they going to you know attack lahore we don't know so this is again you know uh, ambiguous strategy the fourth point says that the nuclear command and control will be uh, controlled by the civilian leadership and civilian leadership will be led by their prime minister modi okay now if you analyze the indian uh, you know command and control structure the prime minister modi he is the person he is the commander and he is the uh, final authority for the nuclear strike but 
he is going to take decision uh, on the advice of national security advisor who's ajit doval right now and he's a very aggressive person and he's ex you know spy as well and uh, whatsoever strategy he's applying the hybrid warfare strategy against pakistan or defensive offense doctrine against pakistan he is the person behind along with that they are going to have a committee as well and uh, that committee would involve you know cabinet committee on security like prime minister deputy prime minister key ministers in short and key ministers would be there in that decision making along with that they are going to have all security uh, you know chiefs like for example army chief air chief and you know naval chief so at the end of the day um, the uh, the uh, uh, different commands which are there at the bottom they are going to execute the order by the prime minister office so actually the civilians are controlling things in one, uh, in in uh, india and uh, the modi prime minister modi as you, as we all know that he's very aggressive person and he has a legacy of hindutva ideology so um the things are not good and, and they, they they are not in favor of pakistan uh, number 3 number 5 uh, india is also uh, india believe that they are going to develop tried forces now what are the tried forces tried forces means they are going to uh, deploy their nuclear weapons and they are going to develop their nuclear weapons for air force and for navy and for army currently their air force um, like su30 aircraft along with that they have also acquired rafael from the france so these aircraft are quite capable and uh, the migs are old outdated and they are going to phase out all these you know aircraft in coming years uh, they are also considered as flying coffins but currently india possesses around 275 su30 aircraft su30 is a russian aircraft which has a range of about 3000 km technically it covers each and every part of pakistan so it has the capability to take you know brahmos uh, you know uh, which is a you know again a cruise missile and it is very very potent uh, missile and uh, so india is now uh, you know looking for hypersonic missiles as well so um, air force has the ability to carry out nuclear strike secondly their navy india possess uh, you know uh, nuclear submarines like for example currently currently they have got uh, arihant and according to indian maritime strategy naval strategy they are going to acquire five more nuclear submarines in future by 2030 maybe so uh, these six or uh, five or six nuclear submarine um they would be equipped with uh, you know sagarika missile uh, which is uh, you know submarine launched ballistic missile slbm and this missile has a range of about 3000 km which means they can take out any part of pakistan uh from uh, you know indian ocean region so uh, this is technically going to give india an upper edge against pakistan we don't have second strike capability at sea um hamari conventional submarine hai uh jisko humne nuclear uske andar missile fit kar di hai but um it does not provide us you know um 100% assured second strike capability usko hum discuss karte hain baad mein thirdly their army uh, they uh, they have got a prithvi series they got surya and they have got you know they have recently tested 5000 km range of nuclear uh, warhead uh, which technically covers china and pakistan um, uh, so in detail uh, india got a range of you know different missiles like agni series and prithvi series so um, they have got a range of about 5000 km maximum which means technically they cover each and uh, you know um, every nook and corner of china and pakistan um so try means in tino pe they are going to have nuclear weapons and uh, this is what they have already acquired according to their doc prime um sixthly uh, non use of nuclear weapons against non uh, you know nuclear weapon state india says that they are not going to use nuclear weapon against uh, um, a country which does not possess nuclear weapons but at the same time uh, they say that in the event of a major attack against india or indian forces anywhere by biological or chemical weapons india will retain the option of retaliating with nuclear weapons so this is again ambiguous strategy the sixth point or seventh point is again ambiguous ek taraf wo kehte hain they are not going to attack a non nuclear weapon state aur dusri taraf wo kehte hain ki they are going to attack uh, that particular country if they are attacked with chemical or biological weapons so uh, this is something which is you know again ambiguous 
Um, then India says that the, the research and development will continue. Uh, they are going to acquire more and more nuclear warheads. And this has been you know, um, uh, obvious from their uh, nuclear strategic partnership with the United States of America and uh, other countries. Now, because of that partnership, the nuclear deal which they have got with the Americans, uh, they are going to get uh, fuel for the you know, civil purposes. And the, the fuel which they produce in their own country, they, could, they let me tell you that they possess about 24 nuclear warheads, uh, 24 nuclear uh, uh, plants, reactors. And out of those 24, eight are you know, solely for the military purposes, weapon you know, uh, purposes, and others are for the civilian purposes. India, what India is going to do, they are going to acquire the civil material fuel from other countries like France, um, Australia or Canada or America. And the fuel which they produce in their own uh, you know, country, they are going to allocate that for the weapon you know, development. So technically, India has the ability to produce 300 to 400 nuclear warheads in future, which means that research and development would continue and they are going to acquire more and more nuclear warheads and they are going to improve qualitatively and quantitatively. So which is going to impact on Pakistan's security? So obviously Pakistan would definitely expand its own, own nuclear you know, program. And this is what we are doing. Uh, the next point says India will work towards the disarmament. Uh, so this also needs you know, critical assessment. Uh, when you say disarmament, and in reality, when we see at India, uh, they have not signed NPT yet, no CTBT. Uh, they have also not signed FMCD, Fissile Material Cutoff Treaty. Um, they are. They have also denied Pakistan's, you know, uh, offers for nuclear weapon-free zone. We have offered them, uh, you know, in the 80s as well. That let's make South Asia a nuclear weapon-free zone, but they never listened to us. And uh, we also offered them zero missile zone in this region in the 90s, but they rejected that as well. And of course, the BMD program, Ballistic Missile Defense Program. Um, this is, you know, going to impact on the conventional, you know, symmetry which is there in Pakistan and India. Uh, for example, let me give you an example of S-400 and Barak-8, you know, long-range air defense systems, which India is going to acquire from Russia and Israel. Now, these air defense systems has the ability to take out Pakistani aircraft, uh, missiles, and uh, any 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 other, you know, thing which is there in the air. Now, uh, let me tell you that S-400 is very potent air defense system. It is Russian system, and India has recently bought it from you know, Russia uh, at the cost of about $5 billion. Now, S-400, their missile, uh, its missile travels at a speed of about you know, 17,000 kilometer per hour, which means any aircraft in the world, uh, it cannot evade the missile of you know, S-400. So technically speaking, Pakistan, this is very dangerous. So the BMD program of India is really, really a real threat to Pakistan. So we need to understand that as well. Okay, so recommendations for Pakistan. This is the last part of the question. Um, you can include this part in question as well, or you can put it separately. So what are the options for Pakistan? This is what they expect from a CSS, CSP officer. You gave the problem. Now you have to give the solution. What is the recommendation for Pakistan? How Pakistan can overcome this threat? So first of all, Pakistan has to acquire second strike capability. Now, how you can acquire second strike capability? As I said, you have to get you know, a nuclear submarine. Now, you can't get a nuclear submarine because it's worth about you know, $3 billion and we can't afford that technically. So what is the other option? The other option is Pakistan must acquire, a Pakistan already has a you know, conventional submarine so what we did actually, we modified that conventional summary and we included, you know, we added a nuclear uh, weapon in it, uh, Babar, which is a summary launch ballistic missile. And this particular missile has a you know, small range. This is about 400 to 700 kilometer range. Uh, technically we can take out Mumbai, let me tell you. But at the same time, uh, this can't give you a short second strike capability because uh, because of the conventional, you know, uh, you know, uh, submarine, and it is a diesel submarine. Actually, it can't remain underwater for a longer period of time. So you need, you need to understand technical te uh, technicalities of these things. So we need to have a nuclear submarine for a short second strike capability. Second option to get nuclear second strike capability is the deep underground tunnels. 
um, like the one you know Iran has built, uh, or any many other countries like United States of America or Russia or other countries, they built some you know deep underground silos and they protected their nuclear warheads under these you know tunnels. Um, according to a CRS a report. Pakistan in 2009 built such kind of you know uh, silos uh, in northern part of Pakistan, maybe Chitral, Gilgit, or you know Haripur or some other places. Uh, we don't know the exact locations, but uh, these places uh, had a greater activity of the Koreans and the Chinese. So it is suspected that Pakistan built these uh, you know underground tunnels in 2009, and um, uh, it has been already published. And I rechecked it with many people. So. Uh, apart from that, uh, so this can provide you second strike capability, and uh, through uh, that capability, you can deter India from any aggressive attacks against Pakistan. Um, other than that, um, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, Pakistan have to improve its uh, you know um, overall um, capabilities in the uh, you know in the space, uh, for example. Now, India possess. Uh, spy satellites, RISAT 2, which they got from you know Israel, uh, GSAT 1, GSAT 5, GSAT 7. These are you know um, uh, dedicated sa satellites for their army, air force, and navy. Uh, this is the this is the area where Pakistan you know lacks such capabilities. Pakistan don't have space satellites. Yes, what we, we do have is a box uh, that provide Pakistan with you know limited you know surveillance over India. And we also got some surveillance in the F-16s and the J of Thunder. But uh, what a nuclear, what a, what a space satellite can do, a spy satellite can do, they can't do it. So you need to get, you know, you have to improve your airborne early warning system so you can detect threat at a distance and you can counter that um, before it hits you. Um, apart from that, um, Pakistan must also increase their, you know, warheads. Uh, qualitatively and quantitatively. For example, let me give you an example of S-400 and uh, Barakate. Now, these are long-range air defense systems which India is going to acquire. Now, how to counter these systems? Uh, for that, Pakistan has developed, uh, you know, Ababil in 2016. Now, Ababil is a MIRV. And what is a MIRV? M-I-R-V, MIRV. It's a multiple independent re-entry vehicle. It's a simple rocket and one rocket it can carry multiple warheads. For example, previously, Ghori had one rocket and one warhead. Now, one rocket can carry 10 warheads. This is what we call Ababil. And uh, this is a very potent MIRV, multiple uh, you know, independent re-entry vehicle, which Pakistan developed in 2016. And very few countries have developed that. So that capability can counter the Indian air defense system like S-400 and Barakat. So um, this is this is uh, something which is you know amazing. Number two, uh, Pakistan can also you know invest in uh, cruise missile capabilities like uh, air-launched cruise missile (ALCMs), uh, air-launched cruise missiles like uh, the one Rad, which Pakistan developed recently. It has a range of about 600 kilometers, and uh, uh, this is a very potent uh, you know you can say uh, aircraft. Uh, sorry, uh, missile. Other than that, we have also developed Babur, which is again another cruise missile, which is which also has a range of about 290 to 300 kilometers, and this is also a potent, uh, you know, cruise missile. Now, what is the importance of cruise missile technology? It evades the radars of the enemy, which means it it fly at the lower uh, frequency of the radar. So uh, this is the best system that can you know uh, evade the you know russian and the israeli air defense system in india so pakistan is already pakistan has already acquired it pakistan is acquiring more and more uh, all you have to do is you have to increase the number of you know warheads um, other than that pakistan should also uh, communicate its credibility and capability effectively to counter indian aggression communication is very important in deterrence uh, let me give you an example recently Imran Khan, uh, when India was planning a surgical strike on Pakistan, so Imran Khan declared that if he, India attacked us, we are not going to think, we are going to reply. So this is what he did. So the credibility of the, uh, you know, of the communication is very important. That who is communicating? So Pakistan army and Pakistani, you know, leadership right now, Imran Khan, they conveyed 
to the Indians that yes, we are going to reply and they replied. So this is also very important and you have to clearly convey this message to the Indians that if you try to mess with us, we are going to reply in the same fashion. So um, in a nutshell, um, Indian strategic thinking is an aggressive, you know, um, and intentionally ambiguous doctrine. And this particular strategic thinking is, you know, going to impact on the South Asian security. Um, so it is, it is imperative for Pakistan to, um, you know, counter the Indian strategy through, you know, um, uh, adequate steps, tangible measures, um, things which Pakistan can afford. Like, for example, if you can't afford nuclear submarines, so don't think for it. Go for the alternatives. Like, for example, the deep underground tunnels and, you know, develop cruise missile technology and others. Secondly, um, improve your overall indigenous capabilities, conventional capabilities to, you know, uh, make it difficult for the Indians to meet you at conventional or nuclear level. So basically, um, this particular doctrine is based on compellence rather than deterrence. Yani ke wo aap se forcefully kuch karwana cha rahe hain aur aap ke upar pressurize aapko karna cha rahe hain. And of course, they are looking for regional hegemony. And Pakistan is the only country in the region in South Asia, which is challenging the Indian hegemony in this region. So um, definitely Pakistan is, uh, you know, quite efficient in its, uh, you know, conventional and nuclear capabilities. And I don't think so that uh, India can ever uh, surpass or India can ever uh, overrun Pakistan in the future, inshallah.